Hello, everyone. Once again, thank you so much for your support. Today, I'd like to continue on our previous discussion, which is on signal representation. For this video, I'm going to show you some example how we can make use of the equation to convert them to time domain and also frequency domain. This will be the part two series discussion on signal representation. The earlier on series discussion on signal representation, I have put the video link under the description. So please go through the video if you're keen to know more about signal representation. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Thank you so much. This is what we have described to you earlier on on the first series discussion on signal representation. Basically, we can use these three forms to describe a signal. Okay, for example, I can have an equation okay, to describe how does a signal look like. Okay, I can also represent a signal in a time domain and also frequency domain. Like what I mentioned on the previous slides, today I'm going to make use of equation to transform them into time domain and also frequency domain. But over here, you can see that basically whatever form that you are given, you must be able to relate them to another two forms. For example, if I'm given the time domain, okay, I must be able to relate them to equation. I must be also able to convert from time domain to frequency domain. If I'm given the frequency domain, I must be able to transform them into an equation or I can use a time domain to describe the signal that represent in the frequency domain. In short, whatever form that is given to you, you must be able to transform them in order to make the signal representation useful. Let's start by discuss on the example one. Okay, determine the peak amplitude and frequency for the following signal. Okay, so we are given two signal. We are tasked to determine what is the peak amplitude and also the frequency. This is a general expression equation. Okay, so this is an equation that I have shown it to you on the part one series discussion also. Okay, so in short, this is a very general expression. So we can take reference to this formula here. Okay, so from this, we compare term by term. Okay, we can conclude that DC is equal to zero okay, because these two signals, I don't have any DC term. Okay, my phase is also equal to zero. Okay, so basically, I have a zero here. I have a zero here. So what I left is basically the BP sine 2 pi FD, which I have written over here. Okay, again, the question tasks us to find the peak amplitude and frequency. Okay, then I need to do a comparison of coefficient. Okay, for example, the first signal, I do a comparison. Okay, from here, I conclude that my VP is equal to 1. Okay, so therefore, I write a 1 here. Okay, my frequency is equal to 30 hertz. So this is how I obtain the peak amplitude and frequency for the first signal. Okay, as for the second signal, okay, I can also see that my VP is equal to 4. Okay, over here is slightly different. Okay, the frequency. Okay, I need to do some computation. So 2 pi FT, or oh sorry, 2 pi FT is equal to sine 6,000 T. Okay, so in short, 2 pi F is equal to 6,000. If I need to do, to find my frequency, I basically divide by 2 pi. And from here, I can compute that the frequency is equal to 955 Hertz. Okay, so this is the first example. Next on example two, Okay, the mathematical expression of a signal is given over here. Okay, so I'm tasked to sketch this signal in time and frequency domain. Okay, before I do anything, again, I like to pull the general expression okay, or the formula here, and I will do a term to term comparison. So from here, I can compare that my DC value is equal to minus three, my VP value is equal to two. Okay, I need to do some computation on the frequency, which I will show it to you now. 
Okay, firstly, like what I mentioned, the DC value is minus three. My VP value is equals to two. And now I need to compute what is my frequency. Okay, two pi F here is equals to 24 pi times 10 to the power six, which is written here. So in order to find my frequency, okay, I actually need to divide by two pi here. So therefore, this is how I actually can compute my frequency, which is equals to chuck megahertz. Okay, so with all this, we are ready to draw the time domain. Okay, so firstly, okay, the question given to me is cosine. Okay, so basically this is actually a cosine waveform. Okay, so this is a cosine waveform. Basically, they start at the tip of this signal here. So basically, this is what I mentioned to you is a cosine waveform. Okay, next I know my V peak, which is equal to two. Okay, so I know that from here to here is two, from here to here is two. Okay, so I also know the frequency. Okay, for example, I know the frequency is 12 megahertz. I can compute my period, okay, which is equals to 83.33 nanosecond. Okay, next, okay, this is basically the DC value here. So my DC value is minus three. So this is basically where I start my waveform. Okay, I need to start at minus three. So this is actually what I told you earlier on. This is my DC value. Okay, next is basically I need to find these two numbers. So minus three, and the peak value is two. So I know that over here is actually equals to minus one. And this minus three, and then go down by another two volts. So therefore I know that this is minus five. Next, I also need to draw my reference, okay, which is equal to zero here. Okay, so basically this is the time domain. From this equation here, I actually transform them into time domain. And this is how does a signal change with time. So this is, Describing a signal from equation to time domain. Next, okay, I also need to compute my frequency domain. So from here, I can see that there are actually two terms. Okay, one is minus three. So this minus three is a DC component. So what I need to do is basically the frequency zero represent a DC term. They have a big value of three. Okay, we can ignore the minus three okay, because this is a magnitude here. So therefore I can draw as a positive three volt here. Next over here. So remember the VP is equals to two. So therefore I know that this is two. Okay, the frequency is 12 megahertz. Okay, so this is the complete solution of example two. From an equation, I actually transform them into time domain and also frequency domain. So this is example two. Let's come to example three. Okay, sorry, before I come to example three. Okay, so basically this is what I want to say. This is a DC component. Okay, this is the charm megahertz signal. Okay, let's go through the example three. Okay, I just want to give you some idea of the difference between cosine and sine term. So earlier on, this is actually a cosine term. So for this question, I everything is still remain intact. What I want to change is basically from cosine to sine. And I'm going to show you to you what are the key difference between these two. Okay, again, this is a general equation. And basically what I need to do is I do a comparison with all the terms. I can actually get my DC value as minus three, my VP as two, my frequency also 12 megahertz. So whether is it sine or cosine, how I obtain all this basically remain the same. Okay, the key difference, is actually here. Okay, so earlier on is actually a cosine wave, but for this round is a sine wave. So I need to start from here, a sine wave. Okay, so this is actually what we call a sine wave. And again, it's the same philosophy here. My VP is equals to two. So from here to here, I know that it's two volt VP and also two volt VP here. And I also can compute my frequency. Okay, so I know my frequency is 12 megahertz. I compute my period, which is 83.33 nanosecond, same as the example two. Again, from here, I know that my DC value is minus three. So therefore I know that they start at minus three. And again, minus three okay, plus two, what I left is minus one. Okay, minus three, okay, minus another two. So I know that it's minus five. 
again, I need to draw the reference. This is the zero reference that I need to draw. So this is how I can make use of equation to transform them into time domain. In short, whether is it sine or cosine, basically the only difference is on the time domain. If the question given to me is a sine, therefore I need to draw a sine. If the question given to me is a cosine, okay, like I told you earlier on, okay, then I need to draw my cosine term here. Okay, so this is actually the cosine term. So this is how I actually got my time domain in example three. Okay, let's quickly finish the frequency domain also. Okay, so for frequency domain again, okay, this is minus three, which is a DC component. Okay, so therefore I know my amplitude is three. Okay, DC means that they actually has a frequency of zero hertz. So therefore I clearly indicate that this is actually for DC component. Okay, over here, okay, it's still the same as what it is in example two. This is a 12 max signal having a VP of two. So basically, I'm done for this question. Like what I mentioned earlier on, that's all I have for you guys. Okay, please help to like and subscribe. Thank you so much.